Hey everybody, how's it going? Okay, yeah, my stuff is on. Welcome to the stream today. I'm gonna be working on fairy house stuff. Um, I've changed a couple things. I guess you can't really see all of it yet. But uh, if you check out the info box down below the stream, that was a ver the first big change that I made for today was that I uh, updated all of the info and graphics and stuff and added a bunch of new Twitch alerts that I hope will be fun. And yeah, uh, this is the project that I've got going on. My fairy house church that I've shown on Twitter and some other places, but um, I need to make the final set of window panes which is currently empty in here, there's nothing. So uh, that's what I'm gonna start working on today and I thought I would show you the process. Hi Elf at 420, that's right. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta see the memes at some point. But I had a lot of fun doing those. That's what I did with my weekend was just like upgraded my Twitch page to try to make it better for everybody and uh, hopefully do some more fun stuff um, just like within the stream itself. So anyway, uh, my process for this is to start with some clear plastic film. This is a window film that I originally bought to use on my upstairs kitchen windows, which is what I did with it. And then this is like some leftover scrap. Um, it does look really pretty on the windows. And once we use it for this project, you won't really be able to see that it has like these circular bubble shapes on it because it's going to get covered up by the butterfly design. But that's okay. We don't really... We don't really need that, it's just sort of what I had. Um, and then I also am using some puff paint, and that's what I get started with in this. These are just regular pieces of paper that I printed off um, my computer, and they are butterfly wing designs. This is what I'm tracing in order to get my pattern since it's going onto a piece of clear plastic. You can really easily trace this uh, and then just apply color after that. And for that, I have some like some paints that are specifically designed for this type of work where it's a gallery glass paint paints. These are by Plaid. Um, and I am part of the Plaid affiliate or Plaid ambassador program. Uh, and there's info down in the info box below on that if you want to see my list of like recommended products and stuff like that. But um, I did multiple printouts because I wasn't sure what size I would need. And then I ended up using this size, which is just kind of like random. Um, whatever your project is, you use whatever the size like suits your needs. But basically I've installed window panes. Oh, I'm gonna switch camera views now. Now that I've like said hello to everybody, I'm gonna swap us to our overhead camera where you can see things that are going on. Um, so from the inside, you can see that I've got these like butterfly panels that are glued in um, to the inside. And so that's what we're gonna be doing on this last side um, over here. And uh, I have my little compression gloves on in order to just like keep my hands warm, but I don't know if they're gonna get in the way of my painting. I might decide to take them off later, but we'll see what happens. And yay, welcome to everybody who's come to the stream. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to do more daytime streams so that I can keep people company when they're maybe uh, during their work day, depending on what, uh, what you have going on. I know a lot of people like to watch Twitch, like in the background where they're doing office work or other things. So, you know, if you enjoy this stream, I hope that we can keep you company throughout your week. And, uh, bring a little bit of fairy whimsy to your life. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna grab some scissors and start trimming this down to be like roughly the size we'll need to cover the windows completely from the inside. And so there's not, I could probably do this more scientifically, but, but this is fine. Oh, awesome. Yes, for our European viewers, I know that um, daytime streams for my time zone are a lot more, um, it's a lot easier to work with that if you're living in Europe. So I figured that I'll try to mix it up some and try to stream at different times of the day. Um, 
so that it's not just always the same time for the same people um, and there can be some variety in there. Okay, so I'm just kind of roughly cutting things. It seems pretty symmetrical. Let's try it on the inside now. Yes, hello to all the forest friends showing up. Okay, this actually fits pretty nicely where I can slide it up against the roof on the interior and it's gonna cover the entire window pane area. Awesome. Yeah, I could try to do my, um, I could wear disposable gloves if I'm really concerned. I'm not really concerned right now. I might take them off in a little bit, but it was cold down here when I started, when I came down here. So, uh, you know, I'll work my way up to that maybe. <laughs> so to get started, I'm just putting this down over one of the designs. I'm going to keep my glove on at the beginning and then I will eventually take my gloves off when I get frustrated with them. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to begin tracing the black parts of the butterfly design only using this puff paint um, that I've kind of shaken up a little bit. And we will begin getting a butterfly design on this. Which I got to make sure my paint is flowing because this can be, this is the most like harrowing part for me where your mistakes will be the most noticeable. But luckily these butterfly designs are only like slightly visible through the windows. Um, like it's, an, it's visible enough to certainly give the impression of what I was going for, but it's not going to show every single little detail. So um, you don't have to worry too much about everything being flawless. You just want to get, make sure that you create the strong visual impression that you're going for. And so I am leaving some like open circles as I go and then just filling in other areas. This stage is going to take a little bit more concentration for me. Hopefully you can see some of what I'm doing. I tried adding another light in here, but I don't know if it's just adding more glare. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. I'm going to leave it on for now. I feel like at the very least, I think it helps me. So that's good. And yes, hello to all of our viewers who come here from Discord. I need to figure out how to get the bot to at the people who opted in for notifications. I tried to set it up, but uh, it didn't it didn't transfer as a ping in Discord. So I have to fuss with it some more. But thank you to those of you who did sign up for that. And now you'll always be alerted when I'm up to something on Twitch. But my general um, purpose for this is to fill in all of the black outlines um, and then we'll have to let it dry, which might be an overnight thing. I'm really not sure. I want to make sure that it has plenty of time, especially given that the weather is super cold out right now. I'm having a bit of a snow day here at my house. Um, not that it really affects my plans for the day too much. But I woke up and the outside was all covered in snow. Um, it's in the streets and stuff. It's considered to be slightly hazardous uh, driving conditions. So I knew that this weather would be rolling in and I went and got a bunch of groceries and just kind of figured that I would not make any big plans to leave the house for a few days. And then this morning, the, the earth outside was covered in white and it was like, well, I guess this is going to be my life for the next few days where it's just super extra cold, but it is nice and relaxing for crafting. I definitely agree with that, Nasina. Um, it's more about just like 
providing that good kind of mental environment, I guess, then it really necessarily changes anything. And so because these butterflies don't like perfectly line up with the outlines of the windows or anything, we're basically just going to cover this entire area with butterfly patterns that are mashed together. Um, like I said, it's more about creating the overall impression than it is about any specific detail. There we go. There's my copied butterfly wing um, that I just traced. So now you can see it, but I'm basically just going to put it next to another butterfly pattern and then start filling in more as though it were a continuous design and just let the kind of outlines work together. But uh, I've been putting a lot more effort into this channel. Uh, over the weekend, I spent a lot of time getting all my graphics done. I've been talking to some artists for emotes. So we have Aries emotes coming very, very soon, as well as some other like cool crafting related emotes. Um, so I'm really looking forward to those updates um, to hopefully build even more of a sense of community here. Um, otherwise we've just been making art, hanging out, getting my stuff in order. But I'm feeling very motivated and feeling a lot more confident and just like wanting to interact more and be feeling a little bit more myself, I suppose you could say. Um, wanting to create and looking forward to having more opportunities to do that and collaborate with people. I've got some photo shoot stuff coming up that I'm very, very excited about. Um, I won't reveal any details yet, but suffice to say, I'm working on new concepts and new delightful costumes and imagery. With some different people. All right, there's another one, just really simple, kind of mashing the butterflies together, leveling up my crafting skills. That's the idea. There's always more to learn and change um, and develop. So now I've got to decide, maybe right there, what next how to fit more pieces together. I'm sorry that the glare on my plastic is making it kind of hard to see what my details are. Okay. <laughs> I'm moving my camera a little bit. I'll try not to make it too annoying. Pardon me. Okay. I moved my camera down a little bit, but I don't know if it made that much difference. I might still move it a little bit closer um, because as far as the uh, autofocus goes, this is pretty much like the range of providing very much detail. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep improving that, but I am always trying new things, new efforts. slightly okay but yeah I am simplifying the butterfly pattern a little bit it might look daunting to have this much random little squiggly lines but it's really not not difficult to try to copy it
I can't even see through some of this. It's okay though, it's still working up. All right, I'm almost done with the most mentally taxing part and then it can be a little bit more engaging. What's going on here? Okay, cool, you can see the black lines clearly. That's good. So yes, we are outlining wings right now, just starting with some black puff paint on my clear plastic film um, to begin our butterfly design. And then it basically becomes waiting for this part to dry and uh, then adding the next layers but in between that I have plenty more stuff to do on the fairy house so we'll get there <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. We've got our outlines done. Now you can see my wings a lot more clearly. There's some open space on this side, but there's not really much opportunity to add very much of an image there. So I'm just gonna end up filling that in with more color. But in terms of like creating the overall pattern and design, we have done that successfully, I think. So um, I'm done with this portion. I'm gonna set that aside. It hasn't even been that long. Cool. So my puff paint is getting set aside. My window panel is getting set aside to dry. I'll come back to this. I don't know, maybe, we'll see how long the stream goes. I might be able to work on it again right now. Maybe I could do the color by like the end of the stream, but we'll see. I might do it tomorrow. Okay. So now, I'm done with this. I'm actually just gonna straight trash these because if I ever, if I ever do this project again, I'll probably just uh, switch. Yeah, the paper ones are just references. They're just images in order to um, create the effect that I was going for on plastic. Uh, and then once the light is on, I think it looks really pretty. But um, this is how it looks on the inside. Oh, I wanna set this. This needs a little, it needs a little stand because this is currently just like a little night light. I'm gonna turn it off because it's bright. But it needs something to help it stay upright because it's no longer on any kind of stand. So I might just like hot glue it to something. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see about that. I've got a couple different directions I could go in with this now. Um. Oh, you like how it looks with the lights on? Uh, I'll turn it back on after a little bit. But yeah, it needs to have some sort of little pedestal to sit on. And I bet I have a little, a little wooden something. Oops! <laughs> I'm falling off my stool over here. Slid backward too fast. Okay, here's my little box of wooden goodies. I have so many boxes of materials. It's not even, not even funny. Um, I have some like coaster pieces, although these are kind of big. Or this is probably a little bit more practical. Um, these are just little tree slices. So I could take one of these. You're listening to Radio Cutman. Oh, I bet I could put the little cord in that little notch. Let's see if that works. This is all just like material to use for whatever. Where did I get the fairy house base? I got it at a thrift store. It was not very cute when I got it, but I basically just collect like little house sculptures and things. And sometimes they're ugly when I first get them, but then I uh, will find a way to make them adorable. Yeah, I think that'll work just fine. I don't know if, well, I mean, I guess there's no reason not to use hot glue on something like this. Like it's not particularly delicate. Um, it's got some kind of weird shapes there. 
You're gonna listen to me make as I clean? That's good, I'm glad I can uh, motivate you a little bit and be in the background. Sorry, I'm shaking my camera around while I get things set up. All right, so I'm just gonna get my hot glue gun ready to go. Your friend made you an old fashioned lamp out of a rustic pipe on a burnt wood stand. That sounds awesome. That sounds very, that sounds very aesthetic as they say. Okay, and it is on. I need to get myself a detail tip hot glue gun. It's on my list of things. Oh, that's great. Critical Queen is making art lesson plans. That sounds exciting. That's, I mean, I basically am a art teacher on Twitch, I guess you could say. Maybe that's what I'll start calling myself when people are like, what do you do? I'll be like, well, I teach my art on Twitch. I show my art on Twitch and then hopefully people learn something. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be fine. I mean, it doesn't need to be anything fancy, just something to give this more of a base so that it like wants to stand up. Uh, Dark Wolf Hero, if you're a member of the Discord, you should go and show your lamp in the Discord and let us appreciate it with you. But anyway, uh, our fairy house has been through several different painting rounds. I've got, um, some like distressing done on the roof and a little bit of modeled paint colors. Oh, I bet I could just... That helps. So this is my lamp. You can see it in my face cam. Oh, in both cameras now. I've got this lamp that I can like move around. So hopefully that will allow me to, sh to put a little bit more light on the thing that I'm showing off. But uh, this is our painting progress so far. I'm gonna be adding some, um, oh, wait, <laughs> where's my head? I have some like tiny vines that I thought would be fun for this one. Um, so these will probably be glued on as well but they are, this is like a wired vine with little bitty flowers on it. I think I'm gonna take my gloves off just cause it makes it harder to see my hands. <laughs> it's good to see you as well, Dark, Dark Wolf Hero. Thank you guys for coming to my streams and hanging out with me. All right, I'm just gonna leave that off to the side and hopefully it won't fall. But, um, so I have some fake plants to add. I'm also gonna add some moss, some like real moss onto this to like build up uh, more texture and detail. And then I think it'll be pretty cool looking. They're almost like Christmas wreaths. Yeah, this one definitely had more of a Christmas vibe. I actually pulled this stuff off of a different fairy house that was entirely Christmas themed. Um, it was this one actually. This one when I bought it was originally covered in snow and I took all of the like snowy and Christmas and wintry um, aspects of it and just replaced it with woodland stuff. All right, is our glue gun hot yet? Not quite. All right, well, let's see what else I can get ready. My moss is all up in the way, of course it is. But I should really start with that over the other things. Just a moment. Here's my box of moss, because, you know, I'm sure everybody keeps one of those. This is another piece but this is a uh, this is like mini terrain um, spongy stuff um, and then this is actual small pieces of dried moss I'll bring my lamp back <laughs> that's a straight hobbit house I mean I'm trying Okay, is my glue gun? It's finally spitting some glue, okay. I'm just gonna put a big old glob right here. I'm just gonna let that hang out. A forest in a bin, it is a forest in a bin. 
That's for sure. <laughs> Not everyone has a container full of moss. That's crazy. All right. So this will hopefully stand up straight now as I want to continue putting designs on the outside. I really just want to have this be kind of out of the way. So I'm going to try not to mess with that too much. <laughs> we'll see if I succeed. Because uh, I don't want it to get more messed up. Okay, so starting with the... I want to do like a, a layer of this green coverage. I'm actually going to start with a dusty like mini terrain. Um, and then the larger pieces of moss will be added later. Oh, here we go. I actually can put this away because I have some moss in a jar ready to go as you do. Oh, <laughs> I got so much of this stuff. I found there's a mini terrain place near me that sells, oh my gosh, how beautiful would this be if I added some colors, some autumn colors onto it? Um, okay, so these are early fall and late fall foliage versus uh, these light green and dark greens, which is where I started. So I feel like I should at least continue on with this. Um, in order to do this, I'm gonna do a couple things. What, what glue do I wanna use? I think I'll just go with this quick dry tacky glue. Oops. And then I'll paint it on with a paintbrush, um, a crappy paintbrush because it's glue. And I'll need some mini cups for that as well. Where did I put my mini cups? Hmm. They're here. So are you building a base for the church? I'm not going to specifically like put this in a larger piece of terrain. This is more of like an, a freestanding little art piece. The idea, I guess, is that if somebody wants to collect these, um, they could install it into their own fairy community. But uh, in terms of my art, what I'm doing here today, I'm just decorating the church itself. <laughs> a lot of scale builders always have moss in a jar. You gotta be prepared. So I'm just pouring a little bit of this glue into a little container so that I can get to a paintbrush. I'll put that back on my glue stand. Sorry, I'm like constantly reaching across my craft area, but you know. Got a small space with lots and lots of stuff in it. And the other thing I'm gonna do before I get too much farther is put some water in my brush basin. This is another Plaid product, it is sponsored, but this is one of the things that they sent me that I did not expect to use very much and now I'm obsessed with it. So just a heads up, this brush basin is actually super useful. It has different compartments for like a dirty water that you can brush your, um, like get the water dirty first over here you can brush your bristles on this like textured pad and then this is designed to hold the brushes suspended in water anyway i think it's pretty nice i'm gonna go put some water in it and then uh, use it as i work on this Okay, we're just gonna inevitably make a mess over this area, so, so be it. But, um, I'll do my best. I have this wheel of brushes to choose from. Well, it's not really a wheel, but it turns. So, select your brush. I'm gonna use something with plastic bristles since I'm putting paint on. Oh, you know what? These are actual Mod Podge brushes. They're designed to have more like smooth 
application though. Hmm. I'm probably overthinking this. This is a nice cheap one. Um, but yeah, I've got a brush here. Yeah, the right accessories really do help a lot in terms of materials and stuff. I'm going to start at the top of this tower and then like work downwards so that as the moss starts to fall, it'll just be covering areas that also need more moss. But I'm just going to paint on small sections of glue over, I'm applying this in areas where I've already done a base coat of this green color so that, um, any sort of like green particles that fall off of my church will just uh, blend with the rest. And then I want a fluffy brush for this. This is another pretty cheap brush, so I'm not too worried about it. But I'm just going to pick up the fluff in the bristles and just like tap it on. So this does not give perfect coverage because it's just like loose pieces that are hopefully getting stuck in the glue. But that's the point of like doing base coats first, letting the, the particles fall, working from the top down. I think I'm going to do more paint at a time or paint more glue at a time. But that was a good place to get started. Anyway. Danny Emblem, sorry you're having trouble watching, but this will be back, or this will be on YouTube if you want to check it out later, as well as I will be back, continuing to stream more fairy house stuff continuously. So thanks for supporting and checking it out and hanging out with me. So this glue dries clear. It looks white as I'm applying it, but it's not going to be visible in the, um, in the, when it's dry. And so part of my intention right now is to just kind of put it on thick enough to make sure that the little mossy particles can grip into it. Trying to avoid getting glue onto this paintbrush, although I'm sure some transfer will happen. And I will inevitably get moss all over my workspace, but that's okay. That's why you just sweep it up and put it back in the jar or into a junk jar full of all of your moss colors mixed together. Might be better ways to do this, but I haven't discovered them yet. I'm still on my own artistic journey. Anyway, from my perspective, it looks pretty neat. You can see the difference in just the paint versus the uh, mossy particles are adding a lot more texture. And we'll just keep building that up as I go over different sections. I like almost put this glue brush down into my moss terrain, terrain moss, I guess you call it.
Yeah, this particular house has been underway for a while. I started it after moving into this place. Um, so I've only been, this is one of the projects that I started on just to kind of get my groove going again, like in my own time. But I uh, might end up putting this one in the store because, you know, gotta make that cash money. But it's one of my personal favorites. And that's why I ended up picking it first. Hi, Benjamin Leaf. Welcome. Uh, you say you're new around here. I hope that you enjoy your stay. We just like to make forest crafts and talk about fairies and elves. You know, cool stuff. Uh, yeah, a lot of people like to craft here. Let me know. Everybody talk about what, what crafts are you doing? That's cool that you are doing some knitting, Mr. Uh, Benjamin Leaf. Uh. <laughs> You're looking for a stick to make a staff? That sounds like a pretty good pastime. Stick looking. It takes a really special kind of stick to make a good staff. Like you're walking through the forest and you think that there'll just be staffs all over the ground, but there's not. You gotta get lucky. <laughs> so I'm still just dusting this mossy texture, terrain texture all over my work and my paintbrush that I'm using here has become a bit of a mess, but that's okay. You're making a necklace with your baby teeth, says teacup wife. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I wish I had more of my baby teeth to make a necklace out of them. I would for sure wear that. Well, maybe not my own teeth, but like give it to somebody that you love. That's romance. <laughs> all right, now I've got this dust all over me, but that's okay, that's what it's for. I have a nice um, walking stick. Yeah, I guess I have one of those. I have a good solid walking stick upstairs. I haven't done anything with it, but I kind of want to like sand it down and Maybe decorate it a little bit, put some crystals on it. It could be fun. Oh my gosh, and I have a torch stick. Since we're talking about cool sticks that we collected, here's one of mine that's just like sitting next to my work area. It has a burnt end that somebody else had already done. Uh, and so I thought this would make a perfect torch. It's like already distressed. As a costume prop, it just needs to have like the torch head put onto it and then like paint it to look more distressed or maybe actually burn it. Uh, anyway, this is for maybe a photo shoot at some point when I need when I need an authentic torch. I like, you know, I just collected one for, for when it comes in handy. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Make it another jar. stuff I need to reorganize anyway. Uh, here's a jar for my light green foliage. I'm going to start mixing the colors up a little bit so that we aren't just adding one particular color. <laughs> you like the ones that have twisty ends? Oh, I forgot. This stuff is like, this stuff comes in like a sheet as opposed to being already cut up. That's the difference. All right. So I actually need to open this package more and probably cut it apart. So yes, this stuff comes in like literally a sheet. Oh, I can just crumble it because it's got all these pieces falling off. <laughs> all right, this will be my 
so you can lay it onto a surface if you're like creating a larger area that needs to look like foliage or um, if you're trying to create bushes and trees that you want it to have like some structure. So I am currently just going to take all of this <laughs> and use the crumbles because you know, they're, they're pre pre crumbled for me now. I'm going to try to fold this back up to some degree and put it back in the bag and use what I just use the loose pieces that I just pulled off of this stretchy foliage. Yeah, this stuff is actually pretty fun. It's extremely messy, but you know, so is like all of us. <laughs> mouse out of the way. Uh, it's actually a, a decent amount. Sorry for the like auto refocusing. The camera just doesn't know what to do when I've got all this foliage <laughs> sitting around. Um, I should not have thrown away my wonderful, useful piece of paper here. Hold on, I'm just going to sweep this up. All of my future projects here are going to be just completely covered. <laughs> that worked pretty well. As far as corralling loose foliage goes, I think that went pretty okay. All right, so now I have two colors, light green and dark green, a delightful mossy texture. So I'm gonna put a little bit more glue and my paint brushes are just gonna get nasty. This is the, the nature of crafting is just allowing some some mess to happen so moving forward I'm gonna try to avoid putting more glue down on top of other moss but I want to add some light green to this and it just kind of gets mixed in with the rest so now that I have both jars prepared I'll do this in a slightly more organized fashion. The chunks that come off of that foliage sheet are definitely larger than the loose, like pre-powdered, but that's okay. We want variety. Anyway, I've been watching a bunch of other streamers to get inspired as far as like what makes for fun and interesting streams. Um, I found a bunch of other cool artists and people to enjoy out there, I guess. So that's been very fun. I'm just being more active in general, feeling a little bit stronger, a little bit more ready to be a person in uh on the internet <laughs> crafting like this looks so fun it's definitely a breath of the wild kind of church that's definitely what i was going for um, where it looks overgrown it's not quite as like run down as the ruins in breath of the wild but it's definitely like a temple of time kind of vibe that i was hoping for um i also mentioned this but i don't know what kind of what kind of religion these fairies have. It's not really the point. They can worship whoever they want to in this church. It's none of my business. I just need to make sure they have the facilities. So <laughs> I'm merely the groundskeeper. Welcome orange banana. Oh, this brush is my cheap crappy brush is shredding, shedding a little bit into the glue, but I guess, hey, it's just more texture, right?
I love this song. This song is perfect for our stream today. I would love to make like a fairy fountain in a in a Zelda style. That'll definitely go in my to-do list or ideas list. That's looking awesome. I'm really glad I added that second color to it as well. Here's another closer look. You can still see some of the white peeking through and then as it dries, like up here, it starts to look a little bit better. But yeah, now we're just, just gonna go around the base and make sure that all of the like grassy areas have been covered. And then after that, even more texture with the real moss that is full size so that it has you don't want to overwhelm a miniature house with real moss because the scale isn't correct which these are not like perfectly in scale i kind of flip between just making things that are tiny that are like accurate scale for a tiny person versus like borrower style aesthetic where it's like the notion that tiny people are living among us and using our leftover bottle caps and paper clips to make themselves furniture and um, you know that kind of that kind of thing and both of those are really fun um, but it just depends on what what you're going for so at least for mine um, at least for this project I wanted to have since this is like a miniature house that's like you know carved to look like it was made in a human style, I guess. Not carved, but sculpted. Um, you know, I, I figured I would try to continue that um, compared to other houses that are more of like a found objects, fairies living among us kind of intention, I guess. Going a little bit more heavy on the glue right now. Oops. <laughs> Got on my paintbrush for my hands. I haven't seen the borrowers in a really long time either. I just think of that as being like a classic story because wasn't it a book before it was a movie? I think it was. That sort of like tiny people living among us is like a whole genre of uh, a fiction that I love. It's like, yes, sign me up. I want to be Thumbelina. Oh, to live in a delightful warm pocket in a beautiful cottage in the forest. borrower scared you because it made you you put yourself in their little perspective and got worried about walking too loud around the house oh that's like kind of sad poor little borrowers must have been just like terrified by all human activity here we go starting to get nice and grassy i thought it would be a fun idea to do nice photos of these and oh my gosh look at how green my hand is from like, it looks yellow, but that's from the foliage. <laughs> all right, good to know. Yeah, I guess I'll just go all the way around. Systematically, I'll try to be a little bit more organized with my creation. I'm gonna have to look that up. <laughs> Sign me up for being so small I can live in a flower, yes. That, I feel like that's just like my truly desired state of existence. <laughs> Thumbelina is your aesthetic. Same. Yeah, I don't know why. I've just always been a really big fan of tiny things. My grandmother is the same way. And so she used to like always collect and send me little tiny things because she just knew that I would appreciate it. 
arbitrarily, no matter what it is, I'll just be like, oh, it's so little and cute and you know, you know, bond over some bizarre things. My brush is just like accumulating so much debris. <laughs> That's okay. As long as it's still ending up on the house, then nothing is wrong. <laughs> Hold on, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's not a great plan. All right, come on brush. Pull through, you can do this. Oh, that did help, actually. Yeah, I need to check out more of these tiny people anime as well. <laughs> Dark Wolf Hero says, Well, the fairies in Breath of the Wild live in flowers, and they're huge. I'm not trying to be insensitive to big fairy people, but it is true. That is correct. We have giant fairies living in giant flowers in Breath of the Wild. So, the possibilities are endless. All right. I actually really love the fairy designs in Breath of the Wild, and I want to see more cosplay from that specifically, but I've seen a couple. A couple of them are really, really cool that I've seen on the internet, and people have to, like, since the fairies are only really visible from the waist up, um, people have to kind of create their own design for a skirt, and there's some very, very creative solutions out there from other cosplayers. Heck yes, that's nice and fluffy. All right. We're gradually making our way around. I'll have fun in class if you can, uh, Technicolor. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. stuck my finger in it on the other side and I can feel the goopy moss on my finger. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, hey there, Vontography. Welcome to the stream. I hope you like uh, fairy house crafts. That's what we got going on today. Just making a tiny church for, you know, little people to worship in. You know what? They're probably worshiping King Ares, <laughs> the ruler of this household. <laughs> oh, I added Ares' bio into the info box below the stream. So you can read about our king, our benevolent ruler here in the fairy forest. Uh, you know, he blesses, he blesses our streams occasionally, but um, I believe he's asleep right now upstairs in his, in his lair. If it's a church, shouldn't it be Pope Aries? I don't know. I feel like there's no separation of church and state. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the fairies, when it comes to Aries and the fairies, it only makes sense because his name rhymes. He's 12. Yes, he's actually almost 13. He's turning 13 in March. My little baby's gonna be a teenager. That's wild to think about. I've had him since he was a kitten, so I've been like raising him for nearly 13 years. It's just crazy to think about like if he had been a human child, I would literally have a teenage boy, which is crazy. And that's why I'm glad that he's not a human child because I don't need a teenage boy. <laughs> I got him when I was in college, so, you know, I could have technically, technically birthed a child around then. Thank goodness that I didn't. <laughs> he should be worshipped by all, including the fae folk. I agree. I mean, I think that's just his natural state of being really, really lends itself to being worshipped, I think. He's uh, got a lot going on that there's there's quite a lot to praise about him. You know, he's very fluffy. He's very, very warm, very soft. Um, he's wise. He's wise beyond his, his meager 13 years. And he usually can tell friend from foe. <laughs> All right, I have an extremely, extremely fluffed out green mossy areas here. All hail King Aries, king of the stream. I am working on King Aries emotes as well. So we're gonna get Aries, we'll have Aries and then also Aries in a crown because naturally. So now that I've gone all the way around with this moss, I'm pretty stoked with how it's looking. He demands chin scritches as tribute. That is completely true, Revival Jan. That is accurate. I'm almost done with this stage. <laughs> Probably going a little bit overboard with this moss, but I mean, overboard in the sense that I'm applying it so vigorously, but you lose a lot. That's like the kind of just the nature of it. I mean, you can sweep it back up and put it back in your jar, but um, it's sort of like glitter where you have to like dump it all over and then there's still a little bit hope that there's still some that landed where you want it. Oh, you know what? This brush is great for sweeping it up. 
even though it's little. Sorry for the refocusing. It does that when there's not enough interesting stuff going on in the middle of the screen. And then it's like, what's happening? And trying to figure out what to focus on. All right, let me just get my hand more green by sweeping it. All right, Puina, enjoy your lunch. We'll see you. See you later. Hello, it's already 1230. It's kind of crazy. We'll just keep it in there. And I'm going to toss some of it so that it doesn't get contaminated with too much like glue and stuff. Okay. Next. Oh, my hands are all yellow. I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit and see if I can save that. You know, I'm going to run over to the, uh, to the restroom and just wash this out so that We'll see if it's still useful later. And that goes for my glue brush as well. So I'll BRB. I'm going to put on the BRB screen. All right, I'm back. I was able to wash the green off my hands for the most part, so that's really, that's nice. I'll move my moss and go for my bigger moss. This is moss round two. There's the forest in the box. It smells good, honestly. Forest in a box. Um, let me check out how this looks with the light on again. Pretty neat. A little forest church. And I do have something planned for the cord as well. I'm going to crochet around the cord to make it look foresty also. That's always a lot of fun. Okay, so I have my... We'll do regular moss first and then vines. For this, I'm going to use hot glue. I've got my regular hot glue gun set up over here. I'm wondering if a just like a tilted down view would be even easier to see. I don't know. I don't want to like 
take my whole face out of it either. Whatever, you guys I'm sure will be fine with the overhead view. Okay. No, did I use all of my like favorite green moss? Probably. I want to use some of this rusty stuff. Other question. Do I have even more moss somewhere else? I don't know. This all came from a variety pack of moss. There we go. I've got some green stuff left, which is what I would prefer to use on this little mossy, this little house, but I've used up most of it. So I'll also use some of this color. That'll be fine. Okay, I'm glad that you can see the overhead, what's going on to some extent. You know, maybe if I just lay the church down or have it propped on the moss box. Yeah, I think that's a little bit of a better view for both of us. Yeah, okay. Moss time. It's moss time, y'all. So basically the larger pieces of moss are just gonna be tucked all over. And for this, I have another special tool, which is finger condoms for your hot glue. Because if you don't, you'll be miserable and uh, burn your fingies. I'm going to try to keep this on my left fingers, left hand fingers. Will the moss stay okay? Does it need scenic glue? I think this is fine. Uh, oh, the hot glue is fine. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't need any specific scenic glue. I'm sure that like there are specialty glues that are specifically designed for people who like are super hardcore into this thing, but hot glue works fine for our purposes here. So this is basically to ornament the other stuff I've already done. So I'm not trying to get like full coverage with this kind of moss. Um, I'm just trying to make it look like it has more dimensional growth. And yes, I agree that this like rusty color is awesome for the, for the building. So I want some of the moss to be like almost like little bushes outside or something. Just to make it look a little bit overgrown because it's not supposed to look like kept either. You know. Okay. Papa Ken Media, welcome. Oh, I'm so glad that uh, she enjoyed the candles that you ordered. Thank you so much for support, uh, for the support and for ordering. And I'm really, really happy that she enjoyed those candles. So thank you so much. Um, Add a little bit. A little mossy boy right up here. Oh, my hot glue gun is straining to reach. That's okay. I could plug it in in front of me. Then I'd have the cable going across my workspace. Yeah, I used to just try to apply all of these little pieces with my bare fingers and then very quickly came to regret that. <laughs> Pardon me, I am moving some plugs around. I am going to move the hot glue vent. 
Oops. So they'll be plugged in in front. So I get more maneuverability with it. Okay, what's going on? A cup that the mocha came, candle came in, can it be used for a drinking cup after it's been spent and cleaned out? Um, I need to look that up and make sure. That's, that's a question you could Google because it's typical um, soy wax. I use some premium grade stuff. I'm not entirely sure on whether or not um, the container would still be food safe. I would need to Google that. But uh, that's a good question. That's probably something I should be able to tell people. <laughs> So yeah, sorry, I don't know that answer off the top of my head, but I will see if I can get that answer for you. Well, just got a little bit of glue on my fingers, but that's okay. I'm also just like continuously trying to pick off the little hot glue webs. You know, you know what I mean? Those little webby guys. so that I can ideally not have a ton of extra cobwebs all over it in the end. Uh, thank you so much, Papa Ken Media. Tell her uh, that I said thank you personally to her and that um, you know, hearing from people who enjoy the stuff that I make really makes a big difference to me, so thank you. Oh, I have one more order to send out today. I'll have to remember to do that before it gets too late. Oh, well, actually, if I'm snowed in, I might not leave the house today. Womp womp. Okay, if you ordered something over the weekend, I normally send everything out on Mondays, but the roads are icy, so no promises. We'll see what I can do, though. I'll get them out ASAP once uh, once it's safe to drive places. Hey Kelsey, welcome back. Yes, I am near Seattle. I'm in the Seattle area. I am in the area that got hit by inclement weather. Luckily, it's not too bad. It's not nearly as bad as last year where I could really not leave my house for several days. It was also partly because of the shape of my driveway. Um, so I have a little bit more, I'm less afraid of getting stuck this time. We'll see how, how the weather develops over the next few days, but I will be, I will be shipping things out regularly, certainly, uh, throughout this week, even if I don't get out of the house today, it'll be, it'll be on its way soon. All right, there's how that's looking. Got a lot more texture, a lot more stuff, detail in general. I could just straight up put like a bush right here. A little moss bush. That's actually pretty cute. Or I could put it sort of more in the corner. Yeah, that fits. I like that a lot. Okay, we've got a little mossy bush in this area now. That was a lot of hot glue. We'll see how this works. Oh, that's actually fine as long as I don't burn myself. Yeah.
Oh, I wish that the sin I wish that my the outside of my house was cuter in general because I briefly considered trying to get some type of snow photos, even if it was just like I don't know, some little not necessarily with me modeling, but like uh, just to go out and try to take some artsy snow pictures of like pine cones or whatever. Uh, I decided not to do that and to stream instead. I don't know if I want to keep adding bigger pieces. I think more small pieces just like throughout would be a good plan. moss up top. Oh my gosh, I love this. Oh, you know what? I didn't add any extra. S well, I wasn't sure how much I wanted to add to the roof. Maybe it's okay as is. <laughs> you need know, a forecast for snow this weekend. Oh, you got way less than that photography. Well, I guess you're probably way more equipped to deal with snow out in Wisconsin than most of us here are on the West Coast. Because we don't get very much snow in spite of it being like, I don't know, pretty far north. Um, I feel like the winters here are really mild compared to other part northern parts of the country. So, um, but yeah. Uh, I'm glad that it wasn't... So far, the snow has not been detrimental to my life yet. <laughs> we'll see if I if it interrupts any of my plans later on. Okay. Wee. I also need to look at my vines now and see what I want to add and where. So this is recycled off another project. Some of them, like this is a little bit of white glitter that's left over because it was snow, but I can peel it off. It's fake snow from the original fairy house it was on. Oh, Gwen DP, welcome! Yes, craft streams are back! I am back to work. I've been enjoying it a lot so far. Thank you so much for showing up. Please uh, do share this stream with your friends if you think that this is something they would enjoy. I want to get um, back to doing this regularly and uh, you know move full speed ahead on new projects and have people to enjoy them with me. Now, do I want to just add a vine to the existing area? I'm going to ask for some feedback, probably. You love snow so much, says Vontography. I'm glad you would have to, to live in a place where you get so much of it. It would be very miserable to hate snow and live surrounded by it. I think that looks pretty interesting, actually. Okay.
tab there and there. All right, I'm just letting those hold on. I love snow in small amounts until you're like completely surrounded by it and you can't function. Then you're like, oh yeah, this is the, the terrible side of snow. This is the, the side of snow that has killed so many people over the centuries. <laughs> it's nice when you can just like go out in the snow and then come right back and be nice and cozy inside your house and not be like out in a blizzard. My mom goes hiking in on like mountaintops all the time and will send me photos of like white out peaks where you can barely see anything in the distance because it's so snowy and like foggy out there. She sent me one yesterday. Like that's what she was doing. No, it was Saturday. Saturday was two days ago. And I was just like, mom, what are you doing? Please be safe out there. All right, I'm cleaning up my little vines a little bit, and then I'm gonna apply some more into my tiny house. But I'm super enjoying this so far. You just want the snow. I just want some trees to go take snow pictures in. <laughs> That's what I should be doing. Well, this vine is kind of twisted up. Probably shouldn't try so hard to save every little piece of it, but you know. Still pretty useful. Maybe I'll put some on the roof over here. I like to try to like make it look like it's growing across the surface a little bit to have some uh, some method to it so that it looks a little bit more organic. I'm just peeling white glitter fake snow all over my little ones. Okay, I think this one was a wreath because it has little red beads on it. Oh, there we go just like pulling chunks of old glue off of this. Okay. I am like recycling everything, including all of the components of other fairy houses that I work on and possibly destroy. I just, anything I pull off, I keep. Oh, which speaking of, I have even more stuff that I can use to decorate this house in a bin right here. <laughs> like, Pinecone shingles. This stuff, which is some actual like wreath material. This is oh, these guys also came off of the original. So this is a little tree that is covered in snow and beads. And then I have other like mini plants as well. Oh, I might use some of these. Because I like incorporating some plants that aren't necessarily like in scale but are just interesting looking. Oh, this, this would work for that. So with these. All right. <laughs> I have so many bins like this. Like this whole area is just surrounded by these kinds of fairy flower bins. So, you know. Sometimes you just gotta reach over and grab something out of the fairy bin. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, Kelsey, you're gonna start on your own your next your own forest rug and your next payday. That sounds awesome. That sounds like a very worthwhile project. Um, Char Char Lee says, my grandma had a bunch of unpainted ceramic houses that are over 30 years old and you're making me want to paint one up. Do it. That's like how I got into this was I was just collecting little fairy houses. Um, I think I've shown you some pictures of how my, my workstation is just completely covered in them, but I'm like afraid to count how many I have. And then on this desk alone, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight unfinished houses and two finished houses. Three, oh, sorry, and then this one's in progress. That's how many that are just sitting on this table right now. Uh, and that doesn't even count like shelves I have up here, shelves in the other room, shelves and shelves that all just ah, contribute to my fairy obsession, I guess. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna keep some of this, oops. Have some of this uh, fake ivy like sneaking around the back. Luckily this is wired, which makes it easier to manipulate and then I can um, just glue down little sections that have already been kind of like bent to the correct shape instead of having to fight with it as I'm gluing it down. So that's nice and handy. Artful Jackalope, I would love to see your forest rug. I bet you would do an amazing job with all of your your felting and your textile background. I'm sure it would be uh, really cool looking. Photography likes to go skiing in blizzard conditions. That sounds terrifying. Good luck with that. Please stay safe. <laughs> um, gonna make it uh, you're gonna, so Kelsey is going to make her forest rug as a runner for the long hallway when guests enter my apartment. So they have something soft when they take their shoes off. That sounds amazing. And she says, I know my kitties will love it. They stole my husband's scarf I made him and brought it into their bed. That sounds really adorable. And I am excited to hear about your forest rug. That sounds like it'll be amazing. And you have a, a nice idea for it already in terms of where you're going to put it and how you're going to use it. I'm sure your kitties are going to love it. I thought mine would be great for an Aries photo shoot. Ow! I burned my thumb. I knew I was going to do that. I just shoved it right into the hot glue. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Uh, right here, an expert craftsperson totally knows what she's doing. Let me just shove my finger into the hot glue. Wonder what will happen. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm totally fine. It didn't like it just did that awful, annoying hot glue thing where it like gets down into your skin. Oh gosh. I'm fine. I'm going to not do that. <laughs> yes, that's right. Blood, sweat, and tears do go. That, that is what makes every art project. It's a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears. Okay. So that aside, aside from, you know, small injuries that I may or may not have made to myself, this is starting to look pretty cool. I'm gonna turn it back on because it just always makes it look more awesome when it's on. So you can see the front of it now covered in foliage. I'm trying to decide if I need any, if anybody has ideas for like specific kinds of decorations to add to it. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more um, flower variety. And I'm not really, I'm not really toward the end of this project. I just like talk through all my decisions out loud because, uh, you know, I don't usually know exactly what I'm gonna do with a thing until I am doing it. Oh yes, thank you. Stream burn count is at one uh, for anybody else who wants to keep track at home. And that hopefully, oops, I don't need that out. Hopefully I can get through the stream without completely destroying my fingers. This is why I need my detail tip hot glue gun so that I don't get quite as much glue everywhere. Just a little bit. All right, so I have various other small flowers picked out, but I think these red ones really suit our look that we're going for. So these are regular fake flowers from the floral section. I just looked for ones that had tiny buds. So I didn't have to go to like a miniature section for that or anything. I just went and got fake flowers, but only the ones that are little because I knew that I would use them for fairy houses specifically. So I have a pretty decent little collection of mini flowers. So now we've got some mini flowers in the front. Yeah, I'll probably stick with this particular kind. I suppose I could be smart and use my little tweezers to place things instead of my fingers so that I won't constantly be covering myself in glue. Nicely. Okay, I'm gonna add some flowers to the vines. I think that's really cute. Oh, thanks, Sinkless Sinkless. Yeah, I have to stop from dropping them with my tweezers, though. Or not tweezers, but pliers. to really like that actually where you can see the flowers are now working their way up the vine I'm gonna keep this turned off because it's just gonna annoy me um, but okay we're getting there with the foliage kind of neat to have some yeah I feel like that's what makes it really fairy is to have some like oversized plants at least in this sort of scale they are oversized um, as well as pop this up again so putting something like that to kind of add to the feeling of whimsy as though you're just a little bitty fairy. Oh, just a tiny fairy. Burn myself again. Surrounded by oversized plants. So that was extreme burn count number two. That was really minor though. That was just like, oops, I shouldn't have stuck my hand near that. You love Lucy. Thank you for the bits saying, oh yes, daytime stream. Yeah, I'm gonna be more consistent. 
I've done pretty well though this week. I mean, it's been one week of streaming for me now. And I am regularly getting online. So yay, progress. 1.5, okay, that's fair to keep the burn count at 1.5. Speaking of burn count, let me just put these back on. I don't like wearing, so like, it's because I'm right-handed and so then I'll try to put them on my left hand but then not really want to use my left hand to like manipulate the little pieces. So then I just shove my right hand in there and get burned. <laughs> it's okay, I will eventually make it through this project and I will survive and hopefully not have extremely burned hands. Hopefully. Oh, I'm really liking this now. I need some more flowers back here. So yeah, there's like, you know, there's certainly thought that goes into something like this, but a lot of it is like, ooh, what do I feel like doing right now? And there's a, it's very free form in the sense of like making decisions on the fly. And there is a method to the madness, but it's still very open-ended. And for any of you that see this and feel like, oh, I want to make my own fairy house, you can do that however you like. You don't have to follow my example. You don't have to do things the way that I did them. You can just uh, make your own little fairy house with whatever materials and um, methods suit you. You don't have to do things my way. But hopefully seeing one get made, well, seeing lots of them get made over a enough, long enough timeline will inspire some uh, creative ideas and you can do things that you would not have imagined yourself doing originally. Okay. put a ton of flowers on this side and have this be a little garden bed or something. I'm trying to hide these stems in the moss a little bit. or the glue spot, rather. I need to get better at using... If only I were ambidextrous, then I wouldn't have all these glue problems where I only want to use my right hand for everything and then I burn myself. flowers up in the vines on the other side, so I need to do that on this side too. This 
Sinkless. Sinkless says, I definitely want to make my own now. There's a shop in Sterling that is dedicated to fairy houses, ornaments, furniture, and they have some lovely base model fa fairy houses. That sounds awesome. Yeah, um, fairy houses are like popular right now in just, uh, I don't know, I feel like I've seen them all over craft stores and things, which is great. I mean, it gives me more materials to work with, but uh, it seems to be a little bit a little bit trendy right now, so you could probably find some really affordable supplies. And I think people in craft stores are generally aware of like the the hobbyist culture. Like you could go in there and be like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this thing, fairy houses," you know. And people will be like, "Oh yeah, I do know." I went into a wood craft store up here for looking for tiny miniature hinges and screws and things like I wanted really really small hardware and so I explained to the employees there like what I was going to be doing I was nervous I was like I hope they don't think that I'm just a crazy person that doesn't really belong in this store because I'm not primarily a woodworker but the guy who was helping was just like oh yeah I make fairy houses too <laughs> and I was like oh cool and he described to me how he uh makes solid wooden fairy houses so they're just like a single piece of carved wood that's like a cave that has an, a literal interior and like a hole and then he'll just carve them and decorate them however it looks like a mushroom or whatever and then he actually puts his out in nature and just like just in order to let them be claimed by nature and so they're completely biodegradable um you know, it's just another piece of wood out there but his are, I think, are really cool because then you have a situation where an actual little animal could make a home inside the fairy house, like a squirrel or a mouse, whatever kind of little burrowing animal might be looking for a warm spot. So, um, yeah, I just thought that was nice. And apparently, there's a lot of people out there who enjoy fairy houses, more than I initially expected, so... Go forth and make yourself some fairy house friends. Yeah, when I was collecting supplies for these, I went just about everywhere. I went to all kinds of different craft stores, um, as well as like wood craft supply store. Um, I went to a lot of thrift stores looking for just like leftover dollhouse stuff. Anything, oh, I went to an actual miniature supply store for um, like the fake grass and things. This is where we're at right now. This is the back our sides. And this side has a little bit of a foliage. I'm really happy with this actually. All right, is there anything else I want to do to this right now in the immediate future? Yes. More of these little Planty guys. We need more planty guys. Oh, that's cool. Any kind of like fake succulents I collect. Um, anything that can be cut down to be even smaller. Decorative planty guys. I like how this looks like a little bush or something in fairy scale. Now what is going to make this sit nicely? Oh, 
All right, I'm just gonna hold that. You uploaded a photo of the lamp in the Discord? That's awesome. Thanks, Dark Wolf Hero. I'll have to go check it out. Yeah, I think that fairy houses placed outdoors are really, really cool, but mine are not made out of materials that are designed to hold up to the outdoors, and plus it, it's like contributing to pollution if you're putting something out there that doesn't, that isn't going to be maintained and doesn't, um, you know, like I wouldn't want to go into a forest and then abandon a fairy house unless it were made out of natural materials and then it can just be like reclaimed by nature and that's fine. Um, so for these, I don't put them outside, but I do think it would be cool to have like a little outdoor um, display of them. Like if I had a flower bed that I was going to maintain and like actively take care of the flowers there, I might put fairy house in the flower garden. Yeah, that looks great because now it just has like more pieces for, um... what am I trying to say? More interest, more visual interest. Do I want to add something big to the top or is that too much? It looks kind of cool, but is it too much? I think that's too much. What about these? No. No, sometimes you just have to call it quits when you're ahead. Okay. This is like everything that I currently feel like doing to this. Uh, doesn't mean that it's done and I'm actually gonna I'm switching gears right now to do some crochet on the cord and I'll show you what my approach is for that but um I feel pretty good overall about this thing having the general look that I wanted so let's see what else I'm gonna clean up my area a little bit put my moss box away <laughs> so what I'm hearing is you need a greenhouse to house a fairy village garden. That would be amazing to have like a functional fairy village in a greenhouse that you just like take care of and trim the plants to keep it cute. I'm gonna just wipe this off, at least partly so that I don't get things really messed up with the crochet. I'll do a more thorough cleaning after the stream, probably. Yeah, just see how green it is after picking up all that stuff. Okay, sorry for the crazy uh, refocusing going on. The house is back, so it shouldn't keep doing that. All right, next, I'm gonna work on this cable. So what I do for these is basically crochet along the cord so that it looks like a vine or something. Um, and I need to decide what color to use for that. That might be too, too bright. Okay. I'm going to run upstairs really quickly and get some more yarn in the color that I want and probably get some more coffee too. So I'll be right back. In the meantime, you can admire our fairy house that we have been building during the stream. There it is. Okay, be right back.
I came back. I brought more yarn. Oh, I like that one. These are some of the yarns that I have not used on my uh, forest rug because I feel like they look a little bit nicer and I spilled my coffee just slightly, not too bad. Um, yes, you didn't miss anything Dark Wolf, Wolf Hero because I just went to go get more coffee and yarn. And in good news, I discovered that I'm not really snowed in. The, uh, the streets are kind of slushy, but they look like they're the pavement is mostly visible, so I feel like hopefully by the end of the day or at least once um, once I need to drive anywhere, the roads will be safe. Okay. So now... I think I know which one I'm going to use. I'm going to use this color. I'm going to start crocheting around this cord just to make it look a little bit nicer. And so in order to do this, I have my variety of crochet hooks. What works for this? Let's see. It's probably fine. Let's see if I need another size at any point, but this will be good to start. Yeah, I'm glad that I'm not snowed in. I don't know if I'm going to be, you know, I might need to run to the store for something later on, but I don't have any big plans besides not being trapped in my house in general is a nice concept. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to try to feed this through. There's a hole in the back, which is where the cord is coming out of. This is a ceramic piece. Um, I'm just going to try to push it. Yeah, I got it by just pushing it through. Okay. So I'm going to start by tying the cord around on the inside to where it can't be like pulled down because it will be tied on this side. And I do want to avoid any of the area that is, uh, the wiring so that this far will not come in contact. I'm gonna <laughs> give me just a minute to blow my nose. <sighs> BRB. Sorry, it's like so cold right now that my nose is running a little bit, but it's not too bad. Okay, so now that that's just like secured on the interior, I'm going to begin crocheting with a very basic crochet stitch on the inside only, or I'm sorry, on the outside only. I got my little finger condoms put away. cable on this side, I think. Will I? Let's see. I gotta like position my hands. Okay, and then try to remember how to get this thing started again because it's been a minute since I've done one of these. So I'm just gonna start by like doing a basic crochet stitch and making sure that it's that I slide it down as close to that base as I can. And then begin my progress. It's a little awkward to start crocheting this close to an object, but there we go. I got a good stitch or two on now. 
So I'm just doing single crochet stitches around this cable, trying to get things started to where it's very close down to this base. Yeah. And now that I have a little bit more space to maneuver, I can continue the pattern. But I basically want to turn this from being a goopy looking, aged electrical cord into looking a little bit softer and more like a vine or something. And just covering it in this yarn to make it fuzzy and fibrous and fit more with this design. I'm just going to keep these stitches really close together so that they're nice and full. My sweater looks warm. This this top, I've got a cool like vesty boy going on as well as um, oh, just some guys subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. I hope that my alerts, I feel like I've barely been hearing alerts. Maybe I missed it. Let me go to my alert manager. My sound volume needs to be up. Okay, so I've got my sub alerts are now louder. So if anybody else wants to subscribe, you should be able to hear it better. Save settings. Thank you. All right, I'll keep working on that. I'm gonna gradually make this stream better. You'll see. <laughs> oh, this isn't expert crocheting. This is simple crocheting, but thank you for the, uh, the thought. I appreciate the compliment, but this is easy. Anybody can do this. Just crocheting around a wire. Hey, thank you for gifting a sub to the community. Uh, that was a lot louder. I don't know why some of my sub volume or my d alert volumes got turned down because I don't think I did that, but thank you very much. Um, thank you for giving that sub out to Vontography. Now he can join the sub club. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yay! More! Benjamin Leaf, thank you for subbing with Twitch Prime. As a general reminder, if anybody has Amazon Prime that they're not currently using to give away a Twitch sub, you have one Twitch sub available just uh, with your Prime membership, so you can always give it to me and I'll be happy. <laughs> but I'm also just very happy to have people visiting the stream, uh, forest dwellers to interact with, via Discord or Twitch or wherever else. Um, if you like this kind of crafty stuff, then thank you. Thank you for making it uh, a bigger part of my day. Well, I mean, I, al I already liked doing these kinds of things, but I felt like so shy about not wanting to be seen <laughs> ever. <laughs> Just wanting to live in my little hobbit hole by myself and never come out again. Um, but you can't really live like that. So I figured if I'm going to be doing this art anyway, if I'm going to be making whimsical little fairy houses to keep my life afloat here, I should be sharing this. <laughs> you are crocheting a dish towel for a friend. You finished a tiny, uh, a tiny amigurumi chibi ghost for a friend last night. Oh, that sounds amazing. It's Jess, I guess. Uh, if you're a member of Discord, please post that in the Discord because I really want to see that. Tiny little ghosts sound adorable. And I really want to learn how to do that amigurumi. It's like 3D crocheting. I haven't ever made anything along those lines, but they look really, really neat. And oh my gosh, my yarn just straight up split on its own. I did not cut that and it just stopped 
it just stopped. It just fell apart. You know what happens sometimes. Luckily, the solution is just to tie it and keep going. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, if you're not in the um, Discord, there's a link below in my description. It says, uh, so it says Discord, and you can go right there, and it's like an open public invite to join. Um, we have all kinds of fairy and forest flavored crafts in the chat. Um, people uh, who enjoy this type of art as well as lifestyle posts of forest fashion, Mori K very soft kind of vibe and it's a really fun place to hang out talk about your crafts talk about taking long walks in the woods <laughs> oh, wait where's my little oh did i just like tie it off inside what am i doing no this is all i need <laughs> i'm pretty sure yeah, here it is splitting again. So I feel like this yarn is just, uh, has some weak spots. That's what's going on because it just straight up broke again. Really close to where I was working and I needed to have this tied outside of this knot anyway. That's more like it. I'm gonna try that again. You miss corded phones? What did I miss here? Yeah, crocheting around a cable is cool. I've done this to a variety of like string lights that are decorating my house so that you don't see the cable. It just looks like a braided cord that then has the lights coming off of it. Um, it looks pretty neat, I think. Let me go through the trouble to do it all. Okay, that is correct. And I need to just make sure that I'm not pulling very tight. Since there's not gonna be any sort of force on this yarn, it's just wrapped around the cable. Um, I'm not too worried about it messing up my project or anything. If the yarn is weak, it'll be fine. I'll just keep going and tie it off if I need to. Can we get rid of cell phones and go back to corded phones? Um, I mean, I really like being able to access the internet from anywhere, but you can use your corded phone, sure. You can just plug your cell phone into the wall and get that authentic, uh, old timey experience of being tethered. <laughs> yeah, just put your, put your cell phone on zero battery, but have it chained to the wall so you can't unplug it. You post your little ghost in the discord. Okay. Whenever the stream is done, I will be checking out the discord and I will go and comment on your little ghost, as well as the other art that people have been posting in there during the stream. It's on my radar. <laughs> what a great life hack, crocheting around the cord. You gotta be careful that you don't, well, it's not really dangerous. I mean, it's not any more dangerous than having your cables touching things. It's just, uh, you want you know, want to make sure that you don't put yarn anywhere near the actual electrical components, like the plug itself. You never go closer than where you would grab it to, with your fingers and then um, avoid any sort of open wires, but that's just common sense. Um, wrapping around the actual cable itself that is insulated is not, not really dangerous anyway. Here we go. I'll have it. I'm trying to keep it like mostly visible. There we see it. You'd be afraid to leave the object on for too long. Um, I mean, these insulated cables are already designed to protect um, from the heat of the electricity or anything like that. You want to just use the same like good common sense as you would with other electrical items and don't leave it plugged in for long periods unattended. But 
Um, the cable itself is not a danger as long as you're staying on the insulated portion. Anyway, I think they look really cool when they're done up like this. And most of the fairy houses that I've made that have any sort of, that have like the nightlight style light inside of them, I will do a crochet on the cord just to make it look cool. But anything I've done this to, it's always a very low powered item, like a night light. Yeah, I'm super glad that I've done a fairy house stream now. I want to keep diversifying the project. The cord tapping off my work table is low key ASMR. Good. <laughs> um, I want to keep, you know, doing various, mixing up the projects that I have going on here. It will always be something, something in this kind of vibe, you know, this very fantastical nature magic kind of kind of stuff that I really really enjoy but we'll keep mixing it up in terms of like what craft is actually on display <laughs> But yeah, this kind of like simple crochet stitch that's just like repetitive, repeated motion is uh, very satisfying to see your progress, especially on the cable where you know exactly how far you have to go. And you just get to watch it slowly come together. Now get a little hue light for the fairy house. Oh my gosh, that would be so extra. I do have a few LED light bulbs that are different colors, but they're all like a single color. Like I have a green one or an orange one, um, but there's just a yellow one in there right now, or like a, a plain one. Philips hue lights are really cool, yes. Um, I don't have any, unfortunately, but they're neat. So I'm almost to the little switch and I'll show you how I'm going to handle that. I'm going to try to pack in as many stitches as I can just because that helps keep it from moving around and splitting too much. Like the cables from, or sorry, the, the white cable from showing through too much is what I'm trying to say. All right, so I've got it here and then all I'm going to do is a small series of single crochet stitches to give it some space. So like one, two three single crochets, it's not quite enough, uh, four, five, that's probably enough. So I'm stretching it down across. So I just did five single crochet stitches to make it, to kind of bridge the gap between the other side of that little switch. And now I've got another tight stitch down around the cord. And now I just keep going. All right, what's going on over here? Hey there, 
there, Zippity Zoot. Welcome back. I haven't seen the leaf panels, the hue light leaf panels. I'll have to look that up and what that what that means. But yes, welcome to the new and improved stream where new alerts and art is all coming soon. So the emotes that I have in progress right now, I'm working with two different artists. Um, currently, they're working on a fairy house emote so that we'll have some kind of um, emote that is uh, for use on little fairy houses like this for working on something fairy related. Um, Aries emotes, King Aries emotes, um, one for raiding. And then I thought it would be cute to just have like little acorns and pine cones and things. We'll see what happens. I've got to, right now I just have the basic five emote slots and I'm, I want to switch out the one I have. So I'll have all new emotes. Um, but that's in progress. And then once I get more slots, then I'll open it up and see what else people might enjoy in terms of emotes. Oh, thanks, Puina. I'm excited for emotes too, mainly for like cute little Aries pictures. I might do like an elf Heidi or one that's just like a little cartoon Heidi because most, I think most streamers tend to have some little representation of themselves. Um, and then, oh, anything crafty related. So like, you know, things that aren't already like typical emojis. So maybe some knitting needles. Oh yeah, no, you can't have too many cat emotes ever. <laughs> I'm lucky that Ares doesn't play with yarn because, well, he does occasionally, but he knows not to mess with something that I'm actively working on. Yeah, there's going to be a variety of Ares expressions. Yeah, this is what we did on the fairy house today. Oh, you know what? I could just leave it on its side so that we can enjoy seeing more of it. Let's prop it up on that guy. And then you can see a little bit more of what, what this one's all about. But, um, yeah, I think the church has been one of my favorites so far because I knew I wanted to do something interesting with the windows and I like the solution that we have oh you know what after I'm done with this crochet I will check back in on the butterfly windows that we started at the beginning and then um, see if that puff paint is ready for me to add the next layer or not because it's been about two hours now actually since I painted it so puff paint usually doesn't take a long time although it kind of depends on the temperature and all of that and it is cold today oh my gosh oh the side view is easier okay good I'm glad oh no one of your cats likes to try and eat yarn that can be really dangerous for the animals I'm sure you already know that um, I've had a few different friends who stream, not stream, but uh, who are like seamstresses or people who do sewing work that have had issues with cats eating thread, which can be really dangerous. So just FYI, if you're out there and you're a crafts person, make sure that your animals aren't eating your materials, especially like scraps that you might discard as you're working, because that can and lead to a very, very expensive vet bill, but I feel very lucky that Aries doesn't have any interest in that sort of thing. What's up, Molly? She says, I just wanted to pop in and say I adore your fairy forest aesthetic. Uh, love seeing everything you create. Thank you so much, Molly. Um, 
You guys are just talking about other things. Yeah, yarn and string is the worst for pets. It really messes them up. He's not allowed. Artful Jackalope says the cat is not allowed in the studio anymore. Probably for the best. I'm sure the cat doesn't enjoy getting locked out, but you know, safety first. And yeah, I think Aries is just like so used to my bullshit that he's like, all right, she's gonna get upset if I mess with that. <laughs> Revival Jan says that's why you make staffs because your uh, your dog can only chew on them, can't do much destruction. <laughs> your dog Zippity Zoot and their dog also both eat rocks for nutrients. Well, that's great. <laughs> oh, that's lucky that it didn't lead to any. Uh, medical health issues for your animal. Jess was just talking about having a dog that ate scraps of yarn, which is scary, but I'm glad that everything worked out. Just a, a warning for those of you out there who have pets to be mindful of that. I really like this color and yarn style overall. Um, like I was saying, I don't use every single type of yarn in my forest rug because I want to use mostly cheaper yarns for that versus like if I'm working on something really nice that you're going to see more of it like this, I want to use a fancier yarn. So this is like one of my better yarns that I thought was a really beautiful quality and so I didn't want to just cut it up and have all of it, you know, hidden inside the forest rug where you can't really appreciate it. Um, but as far as crocheting the cables go, I think it's a great choice. Yarn do be looking good sometimes, says Zippity Zoot. I agree. Like, I feel like a lot of people might not even really be able to, like, you can tell the difference between a really nice quality fabric versus a really cheap plasticky kind of fabric or fiber when you're comparing two that are in your hands, even if you don't have any sort of like background knowledge about um, fabric or yarn or whatever, I really believe that, you know, people can see the difference when it's right there in front of them. And so I try to keep that in mind when I'm working on my own projects, especially when it's like fashion or clothing or something where it's like, I want somebody to get this item and feel it in their hands and go like, oh, this is nice, this feels nice. Even if they aren't like an expert in fabric that, to know exactly why they, they know, why it feels nice or what it is that feels nice. Like even if you don't know all of the details of the thing, like I feel like people can appreciate it more than you might expect. All right, zippity zoot, we'll see you later. Have fun the rest of your day. See you next time. All right, so I'm like not even halfway through with this cord yet. That's okay. We'll just keep it going. It is nice and meditative to do this. You don't have to think very hard about the steps that go into it.
really excited to get this particular house done because it's been sitting unfinished for a while and that always kind of feels like uh, I gotta like it just doesn't feel good to have unfinished things sitting around too much of the time so um, I'm really looking forward to crossing another one off the list so to speak and then not having to feel like oh I have to finish that one before I start the next thing so I've got far more fairy houses lined up. But I think I can finish this one today, at least if my butterfly windows will be ready soon. Um, or at least that'll be ready by the end of today. Sometimes the cables get twisted and it starts to be more of a hassle. Um, yes, I am getting so close, this Dark Wolf hero. I can start to see. No, I'm still not even, I'm like right around the halfway point right now. Almost there, almost halfway there. a little bit of a pain in the butt when you get <laughs> your yarn wrapped around everything, but it's okay. You know what? I liked having this more over my shoulder because then I can control it. You like the idea of a crochet over the cord to make it look like a vine? Thank you. I like it too. It just looks so much more whimsical because I feel like the cords really kind of distract visually from the style of the thing. Um, so, you know, no more cords or rather just cover them up. Okay. That's better. It's not as twisted. All right. Maybe I'm, I am just going to go crazy if it is around my neck, <laughs> over my shoulders anyway. Do I have a whole village of these tiny buildings? Sort of. I have a lot of like houses that I've bought in order to customize them. Um, and then that number is gradually growing as I finish up the projects. So I'm going to be collecting them as well as selling them, uh, which might make it hard to part with some of my favorites, but that's okay. That just means I got to make more. And like I said, with the number of like supplies that I am starting with, I feel like there will be endless opportunities to keep growing my collection. But yeah, I have a bunch of tiny houses all over my house. Um, and that's just one of my, you know, favorite decorative items, I guess. But I was like, I just want my whole house to be like infested with tinier houses. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Revival Jan redeemed a message for highlight my message saying, are you going to sell this one? Uh, I might. I, I'm strongly considering selling this one. I have to decide what is a fair price for my time on a house this large that does take many hours because I've already, I spent all my time painting this before the stream even started. Um, so this one had been, I don't know, a couple days work spaced out a little bit. Um, I had already done before I started. So maybe streaming will just help me keep track of my hours better. But yeah, I think this one will end up being for sale. Tiny buildings all over my house. Do you ever walk around pretending to be a giant? No, they're not like on the floor, but that would be fun. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this type of item is definitely a sort of luxury decorative item, um, but certainly somebody will enjoy it out there. So I'm going to just keep building up my collection and offering my favorite pieces um, for sale. And I'm sure that as I make more and more over time, I'll be a little bit more willing to part with 
some because it'll just be like, well, better go make another one. But yeah, I have spent many years leveling up my skills before I dove into the producing this particular house. So hopefully that shows in the work. Crafting 100. I'm trying, man. I'm not level 100 yet, but just leveling up as much as I can. There is no max level in the real world. You just level up indefinitely until you die <laughs> or you quit. Maybe I'll do like a picture poll and leave it in the discord so you guys can vote on which house I work on next. Cause like, like I said, I've got eight sitting on this table alone right now <laughs> and I'm going to keep doing houses. So I might want to be like, Hey, help me pick where to start. And then we'll work on this. We'll work on whichever is like the most popular base house. Uh, and customize it from there. Oh, thank you, Sinkless Sinkless. That's definitely the goal. So they were saying uh, that they love how balanced the fairy houses are. Like they're not too over the top. You can visualize them as real buildings. That's definitely what I'm hoping for. I mean, some of them are more over the top than others, but I do try to create a sense of I don't know. There's like a sweet spot between like realism and fantasy of like trying to create something that could be real or that like could exist, but that has a sort of uh, supernatural air to it is one of my favorite things. Uh, so it's just, I guess, highlighted their message saying, I have the hardest time with pricing my items. I'm a slow crocheter, so I always feel like I should be making it cheaper because someone faster could have spent less time. But I also feel bad charging. Uh, people larger amounts even though I know it was a lot of work that's like the catch-22 of being an artist in general where it's like I don't want to I don't want to sell myself short because this took my time and this took my skill and at the same time like if someone can get the item cheaper elsewhere like that's just the nature of you know factory made products compared to handmade products it's always going to be an issue where yes, something mass produced by a company with enormous resources, they will always be able to offer the cheaper product. And so as a person who wants to be a, you know, if you want to be a craftsperson in almost any category, no matter what your craft is, I feel like you have to go in with the mindset of like, you're not necessarily competing with mass production. You're, um, you are, your market is the people who are willing to pay more for something that does have that personal touch. Um, and being able to like differentiate between, uh, I guess, you know, cause it does, it does get annoying when people look at your stuff and say like, Oh, I could buy that cheaper elsewhere. And it's like, well, yeah, you can. But the point is that it's, you know, it's this version, it's this style, it's my take on it. You know, like it is, a, it is a niche thing. It is a luxury thing by, uh, by the nature of it. And yet, you know, as artists, we need to value ourselves and our work enough to say like, well, sure, you can go get it cheaper elsewhere, but like this one is unique. This is my product and this, you know, you're not going to find this coming out of a factory. So it, there, it is a very difficult balance of learning to price things so that they will sell versus pricing things that help you value your own time. People who outright say that they could buy it cheaper elsewhere sound very rude. 
I mean, yeah, like, some people just have no filter, especially on the internet. Generally, people don't say stuff like that to your face, although sometimes they do. But, uh, usually you'll see that online or whatever, and it's just like, alright, well then, go buy it elsewhere, or don't buy it. <laughs> um, but, just like, yeah, it's a, it's a very big and complex equation that each person has to individually figure out what is worth my time versus what is worth my uh, efforts. Oh no, there's a fly on my table. Go away! I can see it on my stream. I hate it. <laughs> Sinkless Sinkless says, yeah, I can buy a fairy house for 10 pounds, but it doesn't have handmade butterfly stained glass windows, crocheted cord, or hand glue flowers. Indeed, exactly. And it's like, yeah, fairy houses are popular. You can go and make, buy your pre-made, like, factory-produced houses, and those are great. I mean, my house is covered in little adorable fairy house sculptures, but, you know, if I wasn't customizing it for myself, like, I don't know. Everything that I customize has, like, a very different kind of vibe and feel, and I work hard to make them, um interesting and not just like, oh, I slapped this together with no effort and now I want people to give me money for it. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's always going to be a subjective thing. Some people will look at that and say like, I can't believe anybody would buy this for any amount of money versus other people might look at it and say, oh, I totally understand how this has a value and I love it and I wish I could afford it or whatever. Um, but you know, people who are actually willing to put well, or even able to spend a lot of money on handmade crafts is, it's a luxury thing, but, um, as a business person, I hope that I can just continue to find the sweet spot of, like, being able, just, like, figuring out how to make things that people are going to be interested in, so I'm still on that journey, but it's going pretty good. Okay. Anyway, I'm getting closer to the end of this chord, so I'm really <laughs> looking forward to that. And then we can switch gears again and see if those last butterfly windows are ready for paint. But yeah, I think this, uh, when I first bought this church, it was like a plain solid bluish gray color. It had no shading. It had no like distressing it had it had windows but they were like a weird holographic film or like foil but they didn't look cool they looked cheap um and they were falling off already they were already falling apart so i peeled all of that stuff out cleaned the house off gave it a base coat of paint for some texture and then i've just been going to town with a bunch of different colors on it to make it this far. Hey Travelsome, welcome. Thanks for joining our stream today. We got Fairy House Factory going on. Oh, my crochet is stuck. Sometimes that happens where the hook gets like wedged into the wrong part of the yarn. It's annoying, but I feel like, um, crocheting around the cables also helps to prevent it from getting as twisted. Uh, it seems like the cables are easier to work with in general after they are, um, crocheted. So there's a random little tidbit as well. If you feel like doing something similar at home.
should have given my stream a crochet tag with how long we've spent crocheting this little vine cord. That's okay. I'm pretty pleased with how much I've gotten done in the last like three hours or so, I guess. I've got one nearly completed fairy house almost ready to go. And hopefully, if I can manage to get it done by the end of the stream, I will. I have one more thing ready to share, ready to show off, and hopefully sell. Oops. And of course I like look over at the chat and immediately lose my stitch. I'm going fast to travel some. I don't know. I feel like I should be going faster. I started following this kid. There's a crochet artist who is a little boy who's literally, he might be like 11 now. He was 10 when I found him, but he goes by Jonah's hands or Jonah hands, I think on Instagram. And he's a crochet artist. He crochets with his bare hands and he's so fast. It like, I felt like ashamed of myself when I watched him. I was like, how? How does somebody have this much, like, practiced skill, especially at such a young age? I don't know. I was super impressed. You've heard of him? Yeah, I think he went viral. Uh, he got quite a bit of traffic for being so young. And he spends his time making um, gifts and stuff, I think. He had a business, but I think he got so famous that he got, like, overwhelmed and couldn't keep up with order. It's just like, man, I wish I were a crochet prodigy. I wish I just learned how to crochet when I was really young and never did anything else. That's not true. I like being all kinds of multimedia artist, but. I'm so annoyed that there's a fly in my workspace. I'm gonna try to zap him soon. Uh, Sisu says, the internet will do a lot of damage to your ego when you realize that there's always someone better at what you do. Being the best you is the goal we all should have. I agree with that. Yeah, it can be discouraging. It's one of the things I experienced when I was offline for so long over this past year where I was like not feeling ready to post and then just worrying that the whole world was moving on without me and that I was never going to be, you know relevant to anybody again. And I don't think that's true. I think that there's all, you know, what you're doing is always relevant to someone out there. You gotta find your people. Yay. I'm still on Anna Petty. Welcome a Petty into the chat. I'm glad that you made it. I'm going to be doing more daytime streams. Um, if I can, so will alternate between being available more during the day versus more in the evening, at least in my time zone, so that viewers in other time zones have a better shot of catching them at some point. Because it's impossible for everybody to come to every stream, I mean, even if you're in a convenient time zone, but I can at least space the streams out to where they're not all as inconvenient as the others. Yeah, I feel like I'm just finally getting into the mode of like really truly finding my people and my clan, uh, whether, you know, on the internet or in real life. Um, did a lot of soul searching over the past year and have gradually like started to determine like what do I really value in, um, you know, in my relationship with people or what do I really want from the world? Like, who is Heidi O'Farrell? And I'm still figuring that out, but right now I know I want to make some fairy houses and find my people on the internet, you know, those that are on the same page. If this, if this speaks to you, you know, in whatever way, it's like, thank you, welcome, please hang out, pull up a chair, let's make some friends. So, yeah, uh, Sinkless says that in there time zone, it's only 10 p.m. versus my time zone, it's just past 2 p.m. <laughs> um, I have not eaten lunch yet, and so I'm starting to get kind of hungry. 
but I'm gonna at least finish this crochet and then check on the window, the butterfly windows. If the butterfly windows are ready for paint, then I will do that right away. Um, but that'll probably be uh, the last thing I do before taking a break. I'm honestly feeling up to streaming more, so I might just take a break and then come back and do a second stream later, but we'll see. We'll see. This one's still going for now. One thing at a time. It's so satisfying to see all of this green cable that's now like curling up beneath my hands. Jupiter Moon Tarot loves crafting streams. Well, thank you for coming to mine. Jess, I guess, says, I made some great friends online last year. Good, me too. I feel like almost all of my best friendships are at a distance in whatever way, at least right now. I have some good friends that are in the area too, but um, it's so wonderful the way that the internet has allowed us to connect with people all over the world and create friendships and communities that we would have never been a part of otherwise. So I'm just like in a place in life where I'm learning to appreciate that more, I guess you could say. Uh, Jolly Rogers is saying, I remember the green from the paint earlier was more of a yellow on the stream. Is the green yarn we see actually darker and more foresty for me? Um, hard to tell. It's hard to say exactly what you're seeing compared to what I'm seeing because I don't see your perspective, but does my cat come on stream often? Asks, uh, Lultwig. Um, he comes on periodically, like in some of the previous streams, he was here a lot, but it's just up to him. I think that right now he is asleep. Um, he likes to sleep throughout the day. He's an aged young man. <laughs> um, but I feel like Aries appearances are, I wanted them to be up to him so that he can, he can surprise us at times. But yeah, I would say he comes on often. Um, he hasn't made an appearance today yet. But yeah, I will post up some detailed shots of the finished house when it's done, and then you can determine what color the green yarn is. I would say that the, the yarn that I'm working with right now is more of a medium green in, in real life, the way that I'm looking at it. Um, Stream needs more cat. I agree. I mean, I think that you know, he's always welcome here. I do want to get him a better stool that he can walk up and sit next to me. We'll see though. Uh, one thing at a time. I've been doing all of these uh, stream upgrades and trying to get my alerts going and get my uh, like workspace set up to where you can easily see what I'm doing and that kind of thing. So getting Aries a better step stool is on my to-do list of necessary stream upgrade. <laughs> Quit! Oh, I'm gonna get rid of that fly whenever I end this stream. Aries needs an elevator? Yeah, if we could have an electrical lift that he could put his little paw on it and it would lift him like a like you would see at, on staircases for wheelchair use where it's like a small electrical lift that like glides down so that you can put your wheelchair on it and then slowly goes back up. We get that but in miniature and have Aries uh, able to control it with his paw and that will be the Aries elevator. craft a whole step stool for Aries. I could craft it, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> if I can avoid crafting it, I will, but sure. You're imagining a small scissor lift that construction people use except a soft, comfy cat bed on top? Yeah, that seems accurate. It seems like he would enjoy that. 
Oh, I'm slowly getting to the end of this cord. I'm so close. I wonder how long I've just been crocheting for. I guess I can go back and check on the stream and learn what to expect for the craft time. Aries Evader, patent pending. All right, you gotta invent this and then send me the prototype, please, so that we can use it on stream. Step one, train Aries to only lay in a specific cat bed. That'll never happen, but okay. Step two, move said cat bed to the streaming room. <laughs> Uh, if only. The only time I've ever given him, like, a dedicated bed, he completely ignored it and had no interest in it whatsoever. Even when I tried to, like, bribe him with catnip or cat food or treats, he was not interested in that bed, and I eventually threw it out because it was just going to waste. But, um, yeah, if I could find a way to lure him permanently and give him his own little sleeping spot, especially on stream, that would be ideal. <laughs> All right, we're so close. That's the end. This is the very end right here. Woohoo! Please cheer me on. <laughs> it's interesting how I can wrap the cord without looking at it, says LOL Twig. I mean, yeah, I've, it's taken quite a bit of muscle memory from doing this to several other cables, but yeah. Of course, I also have messed up more than once from trying to read the chat and crochet at the same time, but that's okay. Hold on, let me get a uh, here. Oh, A Petty has a first logo. That's awesome. It's only been an entire <laughs> hour of just crocheting the cord. Okay, cool. Only one hour of this repetitive motion consistently. But that's okay. It's worth it though. It looks so cool in the end, I think. It's worth it for sure. Yeah, I definitely am in the mood to do some fairy house painting after this. We'll see how the windows are doing. And then potentially start another house tonight, maybe. <laughs> Your fingers would be dead by now if this were you. I mean, I definitely go through periods where my hands hurt and I don't want to do any more work. Uh, that's what those gloves help with. Those are compression gloves. People on Twitter recommended them to me because my hands get so cold that it was like debilitating, at least at one point. And so people were like, you should try compression gloves for the circulation and that they can also like support your, your joints and that sort of thing. And if you have arthritis in your hands, it can be good for that. So I don't have arthritis yet. <laughs> I'm sure I'm looking forward to a uh, that particular reflection toward the end of my life. But yeah, those gloves are helpful for crochet and knitting as well. So I am approaching the end of this cable. I am not going to keep going any farther than this section that is designed to be held. So like you would put your hands here to work up. And so this is, this is where I'm ending. I might get one more stitch in there or yeah, I'll put one more stitch in there. And this is the end of the crochet portion. Cool. Cut there. Still got a decent amount of yarn here for another cable. Um, do a little knot on that guy. And then you just hide the end by working it back through some of your previous stitches. Hmm. 
and do a couple more and then I'll cut off the tail. That's probably fine. And then just cut it close and the end will be kind of tucked in there nice. So there we go. Yay! Thanks for the cheer! Mission accomplished! Woohoo! Thank you. So yes, um, I have my mission accomplished for now. Here's my house with its cable. It's plugged in again. I got my lights on on the inside. Look at that. That's so nice. It's so much nicer now with the cable. Okay, so now I'm going to check out my little butterfly window and see how this is doing. This looks dry to me. I'm about to mess with it. Yeah, it's fine. It's dry. I usually just try to touch the really, out, like, really closely, carefully on the outside. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and paint this butterfly business now. I clearly just shouldn't have thrown this away. <laughs> so now I'm going to keep using it. So there's just like a piece of paper that I'm laying down. And so I have three colors of this. Well, I have a bunch of colors. We're going to be using three colors of this. Um, this is white, autumn, orange, and citrus yellow. And these are the colors that go into making the butterfly wings. Thank you guys so much for the bits. I appreciate it. Yes, progress has been made. Uh, celebrating the end of that particular task and now moving on so is the focus still freaking out hopefully it will get better as I'm working it doesn't like it when this area is clean and it doesn't know what to focus on but anyway so I will now begin filling in the blanks with this gallery glass paint so I don't want to cover up any of the black because those lines need to show through, but I can always go through and clean it up if it's difficult to see. And I'm going to be mixing the yellow and orange together. So I'm basically starting with the orange, which will be the darker color and give it something to blend into with the yellow. I like these bottles because it's pretty easy to distribute the color evenly. Um, it just flows out gently out of the tip, which seems to work pretty well for my purposes. And so we're just filling in the areas that were outlined here with an emphasis on the darker orangey color toward the base of the butterfly wing. And now I'm also going to add some color on the outside here, just to keep like filling it in and making sure it looks solid. And I want to make sure that my color is extending beyond the area that I strictly need to use just so that I don't get any sort of like empty portions visible. Well, that was a little bit messy, but whatever. Oh, I've got like coffee shaky hands and I need to eat, which I'm going to go do in a minute after this is done, but it's like causing me to be a little bit careless on this portion, which I should not do. Luckily you can clean this paint up while it's still wet. So I'm going to do that now before I move on to the yellow. So I just did a basic fill of this. Yeah, these are monarch butterfly colors. 
it's not like officially monarch butterfly or whatever, but I mean, they're not real wings, clearly. Just inspired by that. Now, hmm. I'm gonna take a really small brush and basically use it to clean up, like by picking up paint that isn't exactly where I want it. I threw away my paper towels because I had glue on them. So this is my small amount of detail cleanup, which is going to help expose any of the black lines that got covered. Oh my gosh, my hand is shaking so badly. <laughs> We can wait. No! Well, okay, I'm not just solely doing this for the benefit of the viewers, although I do want to see, I want to finish this step on stream so you can see what all goes into it. But I'm also doing this right now before I eat so that it has more time to dry. Like, I'd rather get this done now and then come back in a few hours and be able to install the finished window. All right, that's sufficient for now. It, the paints are kind of globby and that's just the nature of them. Um, and you do want them to have a little bit of thickness so that um, it just helps it look nice. Oh, my, the tip of the bottle got a little bit malformed. It's not any problems, is it? Okay, it's all right. So now I have yellow and I'm going back and adding yellow into the same areas and just kind of blending the color between the yellow and the orange just by moving it around with the tip of this container. So once again, just kind of like swirling it into the paint that I already laid down. These colors don't blend perfectly. It kind of creates an odd consistency because they're like, they're like clear plastic when they dry, honestly. Um, does this seem to be yellow or white? No, it's white around the edges. Okay. This is also the back of the fairy house, so. Not that I don't care, I do care. I care about the back just as much as the front, but it won't be seen as often either. shifting a little bit or my my plastic it's not even paper okay that's it for the yellow the rest of the holes will be covered with white the camera's freaking out again sorry sorry I wasn't looking at the screen for a second but uh it's almost done almost done here we're on our very last step which is to um, use the white in the very last remaining little holes
I love this part. It's just a lot of fun to see it all finally come together. So here's my colorized butterfly wings. All right, that's it for this section. I'm pretty much done with this. Oh, I was gonna add a little bit of yellow to this bottom corner. And it's probably not even gonna be seen, but whatever, it's there. <laughs> Pop a little bubble that got in my paint. Okay. All right, yay. Well, there's one more camera freak out for the stream. Uh, and then let me show this a little bit closer. So it's all still wet, but once it dries, it's gonna be our remaining fairy house window and fit into the back of this little fairy church that I made. Yay, here's the fairy church. Fairy church and windows. Cool, that's exciting. Thank you guys for coming to my stream. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off for now so that I can uh, go eat my lunch, my belated lunch. Um, and honestly, I had so much fun today that I might not even be done streaming for the day. I might come back after a little while, but I wanna at least take a break, um, feed myself, relax for a bit and see how I'm feeling. But um, I think this is about it for this house in terms of like getting it to a place where I feel like it's finished. I might still add a few little details here and there, and I've got to install that window once it dries, but I think that this is pretty much the uh, the overall look that I was going for, so I hope you like it. I'll post some pictures up once I get them taken, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. I might be streaming again this evening with another fairy house. Uh, maybe I'll wait till tomorrow, but I would like to keep going today if I can. Anyway. This is it for me for right now, and I will go eat something delicious and keep you guys updated on my ne next project. But thank you so much for joining and tuning in, and I will see you, if not later today, then very soon. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>